Okay, and uh, <clears throat> now we continue with the uh, with the counseling, the marriage counseling, and then we talk about ask them to try to resolve one of their problems using gentle words. The counselor guide them to communicate gently and constructively. Okay, so here that we try to resolve, um, ask them to resolve the problems, uh, that they will use gentle words, gentle ways to communicate, to resolve the problem. Um, that is what I do often in marriage counseling. For instance, they have problem in, co uh, in communication, I ask them to communicate with one another about any issue they have problem with. For instance, about the children, about the time they spend in communication, about ministry, uh, about how they work together in ministry. So I ask them to, to work through this problem in front of me. Because when they work through this, and then when they show that they are not uh, doing it gently, if do, they're doing it in a critical way and they're criticizing the other person, then I would ask them, uh, what you just said, do you, what do you think the other person would feel when you just said that? And then, so um, if they said that, uh, well, it made the other person unhappy. So how would you say it again? How can you say it in a way, in a gentle way, so that um, the other person will understand it and also it will build up on the relationship. It will build a relationship and it will not destroy the relationship. Many marriages are destroyed because people don't uh, speak gently, because they criticize one another, because they just say negative words that makes the other person feel very bad and so they don't want to build up the marriage. And so they, they get disgusted disgusted with the other person. And that's not the way of marriage. The way of marriage is to love the other person as Christ has loved the church. So we want to communicate in a gentle way so that, uh, that, uh, so that uh, the, the other person is not offended. And then we find a way to communicate with one another so that it glorifies God and helps the other person. Because no marriage can last long if it's always fighting, if it's always critical speech. So we be careful how we speak, how we speak gently. Now, many people believe in lies that they think that if there's something they don't like, they have to yell, they have to fight. It's not necessary. We can ask the other person what they think and how can we resolve this problem? How can we communicate better? So this is something we need to learn. And uh, I know that if some people are used to f yelling, if you are used to criticism, always criticizing the other person, it's very hard to change. But if we don't change, then we don't have a good testimony. Then our words are tearing people down then the church will not grow well. So we want to have people learn how to speak gently, how to speak uh, politely and try to resolve the problem, try to uh, work out problems, okay? And then number eight, the counselor let them know how the relationship is and how they can improve on the relationship. So when they communicate, the counselor evaluates the relationship. If the counselor sees that they are learning to communicate in a gentle way, they are trying to resolve the problem, then the counselor can tell them, you're improving. If you continue to, to do this, you improve. Your relationship will improve. Now, it's true that sometimes they would do better in front of the counselor, but when they go home, they will start to fight again. So it's up to the couple whether they want to work on the marriage because the marriage belongs to us. 
if we don't build on the marriage then we are tearing down our marriage and tearing down our life when we tear down our life we will suffer we cannot get the blessings of God our whole life would be attacked by Satan you know marriage problem can cause the whole person to to uh, be attacked by Satan because when there is problem in the family for instance even a pastor if he's fighting with his wife and then when he goes to church his wife doesn't want to go to church or when he goes to church and preach the, the wife is giving you know is looking at him in a, uh, angrily the, the eyes the eyes of the of the wife shows anger then people know that there's something wrong <clears throat> in the relationship and then <clears throat> the it you know the relation the, the ministry will not go well and also this pastor will have problem praying would have problem having peace and joy and love and kindness so so um, he need to work on the marriage but because of so many because so many marriages have been destroyed by negative words that all the years they have been talking negatively it is very hard to change so I ask that you start to um, rebuild the marriage ask your spouse to forgive you be nice to your spouse and say negative positive words and say kind words and forgive each other and try to have good communication and enjoy each other and enjoy each other now it takes time sometimes even if they don't fight it doesn't mean they enjoy each other because uh, even when they don't fight but they don't like each other they don't fight but they don't like each other so we need to um, learn to build up the relationship so that we start to enjoy each other start to do things together and enjoy each other okay and then number nine nine points the counselor gives them assignments to do how to treat each other nicely and to manage the problems so um, so the, the counselor would give them assignment okay go home and then talk about these problems talk through these problems how to handle these problems so can you go home and handle these problems and next time tell me how you're doing now usually counseling it takes a, a, a few follow-up sessions to see whether they are following up on what they have learned so they whether they are managing the problems if they are not managing the problem just the session uh, the session of counseling is not going to help they need to work on it it's it's how we treasure our life is very important if we treasure our life we want our life to be blessed by God then we need to work on the marriage that is very important okay number 10 the counselor follow up on how they have improved or they have not improved he then counsel them how to improve so if they have not improved in certain points then he finds out how, why and how and then try to counsel them to uh, find a way uh, find out the problem now the source of problem there are many sources of problems sometimes because uh, one person is used to yelling one person has many hurts that has not been healed uh, one person can never forgive or one person still always have you know uh, have relationship with the opposite sex in a way that is not pleasing to the wife now he might not have sex but he just he just like too much to talk with other women and doesn't like to talk with his wife now that is also destroying the marriage sometimes it's not necessary sex if a man just enjoy talking with other women but then when he goes home and sees his wife he doesn't want to talk with her then it also destroys the marriage so we'll find out what are the problems and then try to fix it both sides have to be willing so the pastor the counselor will encourage them and say if you want your life to be pleasing to God that you'll be blessed by God then you follow God and then you love God and let God work in your life and and have 
time you pray together and you handle the problem together, you worship God together and let God heal the relationship. When God heals you and then you're willing to forgive and willing to love, then it will heal the relationship. Okay, now here uh, I explain this more fully and uh, I uh, explain this uh, I, I won't explain all the points uh, clearly because this is too much. So it's, we go back to the first point, listen to them to understand the condition of the marriage and emphasize, empathize with them and give hope to them. So the counselor accepts their feelings without judging them. It's very important except that, oh yes, the wife feel left out and the husband feel uh, not respected. They do have this feeling even though they did something wrong, but still their feeling is valid. It doesn't mean it's right to continue to have that feeling. They need to handle it. They might be doing something wrong. The counselor just empath empathize with their feelings without condemning them. That we don't say, okay, you, uh, in the counseling, we, we try not to say, okay, um, you have done this and that's why you destroy the marriage. We always want to give them hope. We want to s say, okay, now what you've done uh, makes your wife unhappy. Are you willing to work on it? Are you willing to apologize? Are you uh, willing to ask your wife to forgive you? And then you work on it. So we, we m give them chances to change instead of condemning them and give them, giving them no hope. We want to give them hope. Both person could be doing wrong and suffering at the same time. Now, in marriages, very often both sides have done something wrong. Very often, you know, uh, usually it's the women who ask for help more because women, uh, uh, they, they're more open to ask for help. And then they say the husband doesn't listen to them. But it doesn't mean that the fault is all on the husband. Uh, very often the wife may be nagging too much, too emotional, and she has too many hearts that, he, she has, not, that has not been healed. And so uh, she brought all this to the marriage and so it, it has caused problems. So we, we need to find out. But we don't need to condemn. We just tell them this are the situation and what can we do. Very often the husband doesn't communicate and doesn't care much. And then the wife gets frustrated and gets emotional and next often. So the husband gets more impatient, situation gets worse. So it's both persons, both persons. Counselors who condemns will make one or both parties unwilling to be counseled. So if we condemn them, they won't be willing to continue. So we want to uh, give them hope. It doesn't mean we say that is right. We don't say that they are right. We just say that, okay, I see a problem and do you want to work on it? Are you willing to apologize? Are you willing to work on it so that your marriage will be pleasing to God and so that you can enjoy your marriage? We all always give them uh, uh, hope that what, you know, when they do something, when they obey God, then there is hope. And the counselor tells them there is a hope if they work on the relationship. And number two, ask if they want to work on the marriage Okay, now um, <clears throat> we just look at here. Usually people are not willing to work on the marriage because they don't want to change the way of behavior. Now sometimes people don't want to change. Sometimes they think that the spouse can never change. They will say, he never wants to change. Three, they aren't willing to ask for help for their marriages. Or they, you know, they, they just don't change and they don't want to ask for help. And we can respond to them and let them know that there are ways to fix the problems with God's help. There are ways. There are ways to change our behavior. So it's possible to change our behavior. So we ask them, are you willing to change? If you are willing to change, there is always hope. Ask them to say the strength of the spouse, especially in how the spouse treat them. Ask them to respond to e each other. So ask them to say how the spouse has treated them nicely, how they uh, like not just cooking well, but like uh, did your uh, spouse smile at you and say something nice to you and help you in certain ways and be kind to you. So say those things so that the other person feel good. 
The other person feels good that what he or she has done for you, that, is, uh, that you pay attention to it, that you notice those things. And ask them if they believe the marriage have the potential to get better. So give them hope and ask them do they believe that it will get better. Now then they, will, they might tell you the truth, they say, well, no, it won't work. But in Jesus Christ, even if we improve a little bit every day, there is hope. And uh, now usually when there is no hope when one side doesn't want to change, or both side, sides don't want to change, or one has an extramarital relationship. <coughs> Those are difficult. But if they are willing to give up, then there has to be action to make sure that they really give up and don't continue the relationship with the other person. Okay, explain the difference between male and female and the biblical principle of loving one spouse and mutual submission to one another. So we have talked about the difference between male and female and also uh, that we love the spouse as Christ has loved the church. And explain, okay, here we talk about um, that submit to your husband, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So in Ephesians 5.21, before talking about wives submitting to your, submit to your husband, first talk about submitting to one another. So first submit one and, uh, to one another. And the difference between male and female, we have talked about that. Explain how they can say words of grace and say words of the law gently in order to build up the relationship. So they need to learn to say, you know, um, nice words. I love you. I care about you. You are important. You are precious. Now, sometimes people say, well, I cannot say those things. Then we'll say, okay, at least can you find some good things about your wife? If you want to be with your wife, are there some good things about her? Uh, some good things about your husband? Are there some good things about your husband? So if you want to, then you want to say nice things to them. It's something we need to learn in order to build up a relationship with anyone. In a church, if we talk in a rough way, we cannot build up a good church. We need to learn to uh, speak gently. So we say words of grace to people more, like, I care about you, I love you, I appreciate you, you are precious. Thank you, you are helpful. You have done well. You are great. You have tried very hard. I noticed your improvement. You have impacted my life. You have many gifts and many strengths. God likes you. God will use you greatly. So these are positive words, words of grace. And then motivate one spouse to change by God's grace. So it's by you, God's grace to motivate them. God is happy whenever we love each other. When we love each other, God is very happy with us. And God always listens to our prayers. God will listen when we pray together so we can pray together with confidence. God knows your needs before you pray. When you love each other and love God, He will raise us up to a high level. And when we resolve our problems gently, God is very happy and will reward us richly. And we can improve when we love each other and love God. So we give them hope in Jesus that God is happy whenever we work on the relationship. And then guide the other person. So use questions or ways to guide the other person. I would like to have a better relationship with you. Do you think we can have a better relationship? Imagine how it will be when we have a better relationship. How can we have a better relationship? I like it very much when you help me. So these are things that we say we say to that person, I like it very much when you talk to me and listen to me and respond to me. I like that very much. And then we say the words of the Lord gently. So instead of just telling them, go clear the garbage, we say, when you clear the garbage, I'm very happy. Please do it for me. Uh, please help me. Uh, and uh, can we talk gently? Can we communicate? So these are ways that we, we find out how we can uh, relate better. Exploring means to find out ways that how we can relate better. Guiding is, we, I know an answer, and then I try to guide him to understand this. Uh, 
do you want I, I like you to listen to me uh, do you think it's hard for you to listen to me and respond to me that is guiding and teaching sometimes we tell the person but sometimes we can use questions use questions it's better that we can talk positively isn't it better that we can talk positively can we appreciate each other and would you like to do it would you help me and even rebuking uh, we can say when you talk like that it's uh, do you think how the people would feel and then ask them to resolve a their problem okay here I will finish here and then we'll stop here the counselor has to be very familiar with words of grace words of the law and accusation he has to be saying words of grace himself all the time so the counselor has to understand the words of grace and the words of the law and accusation and what is the gentle way to say words of the law the counselor has to be very very familiar when the couples communicate they talk about a problem they try to resolve they easily accuse each other and they don't realize that this hurt the marriage with time and it's hard for the marriage to recover when they continue to accuse each other so very often people accuse each other we we uh, the counselor has to be sensitive to that whenever one person accuses or despises the other person the counselor can say how do you think what you just said can affect your spouse does it make him unhappy and despised how can you say this in a gentle way so when someone when one of the spouses say something negative then immediately the counselor would stop uh, if he says something negative if he says something good then we can say this is good this is good but if it's not good then we'll say we just uh, what did you just say to your spouse you just said oh, he can do it and no he he's never like that he will never change now how would that affect him <clears throat> so ask him and then how can you say it better the way to say it better is like oh if you work on it I'll be very happy and I'm sure you can improve a little bit I can imp I'm sure that you can continue to improve so these are ways that we can say it I'm sure you can work on it okay number four whenever one person says something that builds up the, the relationship the counselor can applaud him and say this is good you are to saying the right thing and also ask the spouse to applaud him and ask the spouse also say wow you said the good thing it's good that you said that and he can respond by saying thank you the counselor can ask the spouse when you when he says something nice to you like that how do you feel so you ask the other person when he says something nice how do you feel if he says that he feels good the counselor can encourage them to talk like that all the time to make the other person feel good the purpose of the practice is to help them to be treating each other nicely all the time then the marriage can be built up okay and then some people will say it's too hard to talk gently like that we can say that this is what the Bible teaches us Colossians 4 6 let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one Proverbs 25 15 by long bear forbearance a ruler is persuaded and a gentle tongue breaks a bone so gentle tongues and Ephesians 4 15 but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ so we say things in love okay and so the counselor let them know how the relationship is and then give them assignment go home and do the assignments and then check with them and then see how where they improve now this is hard to learn counseling just with one session but I hope that you can remember some of this instead of teaching you guide the other person and tell them the difference the main thing if I summarize tell them the difference between male and female that's a very important part and then tell them uh, how to say words of grace and we get used to saying words of grace first all the pastors here get used to saying the words of grace to your spouse get used to saying I like you I love you because he is the gift from God to you you know I said that to my wife many times I said you are the wonderful gift from God to me I thank God for giving you to me I thank God for that 
So I say that to her. And the more I say that to her, the more she feel happy. And then she'll be motivated to relate to me in a good way. So learn to say words of grace. And then when we have to ask the other person to change, then we ask them in a gentle way. So to say words of the law in a gentle way. And then try to resolve problems in a gentle way. And then if a couple cannot now, if the pastor here, you want to handle your problem with your spouse and try to resolve some problem, and then if it doesn't work, you can come to me for help. Or you can come to another pastor for help if the pastor knows how to do counseling. Or you just calm down and then wait for the time when you calm down more, and then you try to say things nicely and be willing to admit your fault and ask your person to forgive and then also you make an agreement together in God and say we want to work on this marriage we want to build on this marriage we want the marriage to glorify God we want our life whole life to go better and better instead of having more and more problems so I hope that you all will work on your marriage because your marriage will affect your ministry and affects your relationship with God and when God is pleased with you he'll bless your whole life Okay, so if you do, you have any questions? Any more questions? We'll stop here. <clears throat> do you have any more questions about? Um, okay, now if you have any more questions, you can send them to me, and then we'll I'll answer them tomorrow. Okay, let's pray together now. And um, uh, let me ask you: Do you have any uh, couple here? If you have any couple here, then. The couple will pray together, hold hands together and pray together and ask God to forgive, uh, to, f you know, ask God, ask the other person to forgive uh, himself, that to ask to apologize to the other person. Okay, so you can stand up to pray and then if you have your spouse there, then you hold his or her hand and then you first say, sorry, I've done this to you. Please help me to love you more. And uh, I want to build up the marriage. Okay, so please do that. And then we'll pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because you have given us marriage so that we can support each other, so that we can love each other and help each other. But it's a pity that many people have problems in marriages that because of our negative words because of our negative thinking our negative mentality this affects our marriage or we are not willing to love the other person as Christ loved the church Lord forgive our sins forgive our sins if we have hurt the other person help us to love one another and help us to love our spouse more than we love other women or other men that we love our spouse and treasure our spouse. Our spouse is the gift from God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us our spouse and ma our marriage. Please help us to restore our marriage. And for those who are not married yet, Lord, help us to seek the guidance of God and the guidance of pastor to find the right Christian and not to rush into marriages to have premarital counseling so that we know whether the person is suitable to relate to the other person to see whether we are suitable instead of rushing into marriages Lord Jesus help us help us guide us so that we'll find the spouse that you prepare for us thank you Lord Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen now I want to say this that premarital counseling is another big issue and a big thing to learn but because of the limited time we might not be able to talk about that I might talk about that briefly very briefly so that you prevent problematic marriages in the future when people are dating the church the pastor should counsel them there should be dating counseling uh, now many young people don't want to be counseled on dating but it's very important to counsel them on dating 
so that they are uh, seeking the right spouse. You know, when dating, people are so, you know, they, many people just want to have sex. And they think that having sex would, would solve the problem. Actually, it doesn't. It would complicate the problem. God doesn't like that. So don't have sex before marriage. And, but many men, especially men, rush us to have sex. They want to have body contact and rush to have sex. And, it, you know, and then after the sex, they lose interest in a woman. So, so I, I ask that the church, the pastor, the leaders will counsel the young people uh, to guide them how to have right, you know, uh, to seek God in, in the guidance of, um, of marriage, of dating.